You're listening to Advice from Your Advocates, a show where we provide elder law advice to professionals who work with the elderly and their families. Welcome back to another episode of Advice from Your Advocates. And today we have a special episode because this is actually our one year anniversary. And so for our one year anniversary, we have a special guest, which is our producer for Advice from Your Advocates, Savannah Mexico. And so Savannah has been with the law firm for, I don't know, three years? Four years. Four years. Okay. And uh, we've been producing this podcast for about a year. Um, And today we have a special episode that uh, Savannah has been very instrumental in creating a program through the law office called the Young Adult Protection Plan. So tell us about the Young Adult Protection Plan and how that came about. Sure. Um, So I know typically this isn't what we talk about um, on our Advice from Your Advocates podcast, um, but it is important and it will affect our listeners. So the reason why I thought that this would be a really cool program for a law firm is because I'm a parent of a young adult and my daughter last year was going on to college and I realized I'm not totally prepared for her to go to college. Of course, emotionally, that's one thing, but just all of the like necessities and things that she's going to need to make sure that I can still take care of her when she's gone. So like her financial, you know, banking, things like that. If she were to get sick or, you know, go into the hospital, I would need to make sure that I can contact the people that I would need to contact. So she's leaving the nest, but I wasn't quite ready to, uh, you know, throw her all the way out of the nest and away from the tree. Um, And I thought that there are probably a lot of other parents in my situation who are facing this change but not quite sure how to deal with it. Um, and so I just thought it would be really good for us to address that for people in the community. Yeah, and I have younger kids also, so there's a big age difference here, but I uh, I had kids at an older age. And so I actually, my oldest is 16 and, and really haven't come across this yet. But what a lot of my kids' friends' parents when I started talking about this young adult protection plan, they really had no idea that once that person turns 18, that young adult turns 18, that the parents have no say. They can't get information necessarily because of the privacy laws. They can't get access. They can't get any information from the college or the hospital or um, if they got arrested uh, or things like that. So it's a very important element to say, okay, boy, I'm sending my my uh, 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 20-year-old young adult off to another uh, city, another state, you know, sometimes even an overseas study program. And if something bad happens, I as a parent don't have access to help them because we didn't get these proper legal documents in place. That's yeah. really, really important. Yeah, it's kind of scary when you think about it, or at least it was to me. <laughs> so I have one other introduction to do today. So since Savannah is on this side of the camera today, we have our assistant producer, Jillian, and is our very own young adult who has uh, just graduated from uh, college. Hi. And so Jillian is very excited. She just took the LSAT and is looking forward to going off to law school uh, in the near future. So we're really excited about that for Jillian. Yeah. So um, the issue about these, uh, what does this mean? What is the what is the idea? What are the kind of documents that we're looking at here? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think that it's important for us to really explain to our listeners what's included and why it's important. And I kind of touched on this when I first started, um, you know, my little sh- my shtick um, about why I wanted this at the firm. But Bob, why is this something that we should talk about on the podcast? Okay, good point. So the idea is that I think that probably we don't have too many uh, 18-year-old listeners to our podcast that are advice from your advocates, typically related to the long-term care and and aging industry. But I'm hoping that we have lots of parents and grandparents that are listening. And even the professionals that are financial professionals or the social workers and other long-term care professionals that might be listening to this broadcast probably have kids and your kids are probably getting into that age where they might be getting closer to college or actually past college, even if they've graduated from college like Jillian. And the idea is unless they already have their own things in place, pretty much anybody over 18 years old should have somebody that they love and trust appointed to be able to get access to information and make decisions if they're unconscious or if they're in the hospital or they're otherwise incapacitated. And uh, that is required. You can't do that. There's the only other option is to go to court. 
and uh, get into court and ask a judge for permission for that. So it's really important. And so it's probably not something that our 18 year olds or even 25 year olds are thinking a lot about, but I'm hoping the grandparents and the parents start thinking about that to say, you know what, Uh, you know, I'll I'll give you a a Christmas gift or a a graduation gift from high school. But in addition to that, we want you to consider appointing someone you love and trust to uh, be able to have access and help you out in case something bad happens. Yeah, that's so important. So back to your question that I alluded, um, what's included? Um, So um, I know that we have the power of attorney document, then there's one for financial And then we also have one that allows you to make medical decisions. And it's not, what do we call it in our firm, Bob? We call it a healthcare power of attorney or patient advocate. Yeah, exactly. And why is that so important for an 18 year old? Because I know we have a social media, a few social media pages, and we had a lot of people asking some questions. We posted a video about this um, and we had a lot of responses, especially on TikTok. Um, side note, if you're not following us on TikTok, go ahead and look for a man or love group there. And Instagram and Facebook, yeah, yeah, and YouTube. And I... Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's not why we're here today. Um, so a lot of people were saying, well, hey, you know, I'm the parent. Can I just call the hospital and ask what's going on with my child? Um, why why is, do we need something like this, Bob, even though they are our child, technically? Yeah. So in the United States, if once somebody turns 18, they're considered an adult. And they're considered the same amount of adult as somebody who's 40 or 60. And so uh, the law says, and there's all these privacy laws, you probably maybe have heard of the HIPAA law, uh, the healthcare privacy law, that says that the hospital is not even necessarily supposed to acknowledge that they've been admitted to the hospital. Um, the college is often going to sort of stand up for the privacy of the of the student and not release any information about what's going on with the student. And so it, you don't legally have access. Now, does it ever happen where a doctor says, okay, well, this is a young person and the parent, sometimes probably people kind of play fast and loose with that privacy law, but how do you know you're going to get somebody that does that? And legally, they're not supposed to. So we really think that it's very important, particularly for the medical side of things. And it's a separate document. You pointed this out, Savannah. Most people don't realize that there's two documents, one for financial matters and one for medical. So some people say, well, why do I need the financial one? Well, if you are if you get sick and you're in the hospital, car accident, something like that, somebody probably still needs to access your bank account. But that's probably not as important for an 18-year-old as the medical one. Whereas um, if you're unconscious, someone needs to make decisions for you and you need to appoint someone you love and trust. That's a phrase I use a lot. Someone you love and trust. It has to be both because it could be somebody that you love but don't trust and that's not really who you want to appoint somebody that you trust but don't love and they don't you, you don't know that they're going to make the best decisions or the decisions that you would find appropriate for yourself so it's really important that they have somebody that they love and trust that can make get access talk to the doctors get information ask questions and if the person's not able to make their own medical decisions uh make those decisions for them without having to run off to court and get a guardianship which is a timely process cumbersome process and uh, not really something that most families want to go through in, in, in a, during a crisis. Yeah, absolutely. And the less uh, sort of critical reason why, but one that was important to my daughter, the teenager, she hates making phone calls. She hates making appointments. She hates talking to people about things that are important. <laughs> so she was more than happy to uh, still let mama have some of that control to, to go in and help with those things. Have you seen that? This, there was a little uh, meme or whatever going around social media and the young person comes up to the uh, receptionist and they say, my mom made the appointment for me. <laughs> yeah. It's just very funny because, you know, it's a young adult. Clearly they're capable of it, but that's kind of a common uh, practice. And I think that's very true. That's a, a, a new sort of cultural phenomenon for the last few years. Uh, nobody really wants to talk to anybody else. I'll admit that I probably won't order a pizza if I have to talk to somebody. If I don't, can't, can't do it online, I'm not, I'm going to go to a different pizza place. <laughs> I'm usually driving, so I actually have to come. Yeah, <laughs> even better. Yeah. So. Oh, goodness. Anyway, we digress. We digress. <laughs> 
Um, so we actually have a few other documents. It's not just the power of attorney, the financial and the healthcare documents. What else is included in this that's super critical and important? And this was also that your request. You said, you know, if we're saying that pretty much anybody over 18 needs legal documents, why would we just do the minimum? Why not go ahead and throw in some other important documents? And so the two other documents that are included is a very simple will and a privacy waiver. And so, and we try to make this process as easy as possible. We know that a young adult is not going to want to spend a lot of time and come into the office a bunch of times. Basically, we've limited it down to only having to come into the office once. And we could avoid that if they'd allow us to sign legal documents remotely, but they don't allow that in Michigan. And so uh, we've gotten it down to one visit and one quick phone call uh, with an attorney. We're going to want to make sure that we gather the right information and we've asked the right questions, but it's a really, really simple process. And we're even working on trying to make it even more simple where it's an online form. And then we just question you at, at the signing to make sure that you're, you understand and are comfortable with everything. But um, what my point on having this be really easy is I want it to be simple. I want it to be cost effective, but I also don't want it to be some form document that you're getting from, from the, you know, most of the time, honestly, I'll tell you, most of those form documents I've seen are filled in wrong in some way. And so this is intended to be real legal advice, real legal documents, not just forms, but make it as easy as possible for them to get them. And so one of them is the simple will. Why do you need a simple will? Well, we don't know what the future is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen. And we want to make sure that things are going to go in the right direction. Also, we want to make sure that if something bad happens, this is kind of an awful thing to think about. But if there was a, a wrongful death or something like that, a car accident, that has to go through the will. There has to be a will to specify who's going to be in charge, who's going to get the, the proceeds from it. Sometimes, you know, life's complicated and sometimes we wouldn't want it to be our next of kin. Maybe we wouldn't want it to be our father or our mother. Maybe we wouldn't want it to be our sibling. Maybe we would want, you know, someone else involved. And so we uh, we do a simple will for the uh, the kids. I'm sorry, the young adults. And then we also do uh, the privacy waiver, which is very important because if you've ever tried to call and get information uh, from anybody, they'll often say, well, I can't talk to you because of the privacy rules. So that's what's involved in it. Absolutely. And you mentioned the word privacy. Um, this is also something that came up quite a bit on the social media, uh, on the TikTok, the TikTok. <laughs> I'm not a young adult. Um, so, you know, a lot of uh, pushback came. Well, what about privacy? You know, what about my 18 year old doesn't want me? having access to all of these things. What what kind of response do you have for those? Yeah, people? and I think there were a number of comments from younger people, probably even people under 18 that were saying, I wouldn't want my parents to have that. And that's fine. I understand that. And this is all, this is obviously, if you're 18, you're an adult, you get to make your own decisions. What I'm suggesting is you need someone to have that. You need someone you love and trust. For most folks, it's going to be their parents. For most folks, it's going to be the adults that uh, are still in their lives, the parents, grandparents, uh, aunts, uncles, whatever. But the idea is you make that choice. And even if so, as a lawyer, even if grandpa was paying for it or grandma's paying for it, I can't follow what grandma and grandpa are saying. I cannot do what they tell me because they pay me. I have to do what my client tells me. So if my client says, no, I want my sister, I don't want my mom because I don't want them to have access to my medical records, then that's what we prepare. And so frankly, I think it's very important to respect everybody's adult decision making. But at the same time, I do think it's important that you have somebody that you love and trust so we don't end up in a court if something very bad happens. Yeah. So that, that's the way we deal with that privacy issue, because it's not in parents imposing this on you. That we generally don't have the parents in the room when you're signing this. So that way, then you can you know, tell us, OK, are you sure? Are you comfortable with this? You make the, the kids make the decisions. Uh, they just have to have somebody that they love and trust who would have access to the medical information and be able to make medical decisions for them if they were unconscious. And it's also important to know that these documents can change and grow and evolve. So, Absolutely. you know, this plan right now, why it might be great for a 21 year old, um, when that 20 year old gets married or has a child or starts working and now has a 401k, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, they're going to want to make an update to that plan. So this is just something that's, that's just for now, that's going to make sure that they're still safe and protected and that you can still be there for them in the way that's really meaningful and important. 
Um, you know, of course, all the emotional stuff and the milestones are, are still, you know, of course, going to always supersede these things until you need them. And then you're going to be really happy that you have them. And, uh, you know, that's really important for everybody, for all adults, that you take a look at that every once in a while and make those updates. Has there been a death? Has the person you've appointed moved away? Has there been a divorce? You know, has there been different things like that? So I recommend that you take a look at that and actually look at the document because sometimes our memories fall to we think, oh, I appointed my daughter. And you look on there and it's actually somebody else. And so really once a year, I think you should take those documents out and look at them. For our clients, we actually have a, a process to remind them to do that once a year to look at them. But I'm going to tell you, it's I've been happy a number of times where somebody had an old legal document, which was out of date, that probably named the wrong person, but we still had something in place so that when that emergency occurred, we had somebody that we could go to to say, hey, can you help us out because this person's in crisis? And, you know, then they get advice from the right people and probably follow the, the instructions of the of the spouse or, the you know, the, the kids or those types of things. But so many times I've been happy that there was an old document there. So while I admit that you should update them when things change, when there's changes in family and circumstances. I still think it's valuable to have that old one just in case you never get around to updating it, which you should. Okay. So that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. An old document is still better than no document at all. Absolutely. Good point. <laughs> um, so Bob, how would someone, if you know they wanted to take advantage of this um, young adult protection plan that we have, they're thinking maybe a grandchild or their child, or maybe there is an actual young adult that's listening to this show that's like, maybe I want mom to kind of step in and help. What should they do? Um, how do they get in touch with this? Yeah, so right now, the best way to do that is just to call our phone number. So our 800 number is 1-800-990-6030. And then we're going to streamline the process from there. We're going to make it really simple have, so that you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. But unfortunately, right now, you actually have to talk to somebody. Yeah. And in fact, you actually have to physically come into the office. If you're a little further away, there is a way that we can do the signing where without coming into one of our physical physical offices, um, but you will have to fit, come into somebody's office because we're going to need notary and witness. Um, that's something that we can arrange under the right circumstances, even if you're up in, you know, the UP or in Grand Rapids or something like that. If you're out of state, then the question is, are you a Michigan resident or not? Because you're going to want the Michigan documents if you're a Michigan resident. If you're a resident of another state, then we can refer you to a lawyer in that state. I have a lot of friends that have done a similar program. In fact, some of them saw our program and they said, we should do that. And they've copied it. So I have friends from all over the country that would be happy to help you if you are out of state. And if you do come to our office, we give you coffee or Coke or Diet Coke. It's great. They're all really nice. <laughs> and sometimes, like today, there might even be cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Jillian, now's probably a good time to uh, gather the crew and bring over the cake. And as she does that, uh, we're going to talk about the, the podcast. Yeah. So, why are you having cake, Bob? <laughs> it's been one year of podcasts, and it's been really fun. And uh, we've learned a lot from the podcast yeah, process. Absolutely. And uh, you can probably tell as the podcast went on, we got a little bit uh, more professional, a little bit more interesting. Um, and we try to keep it uh, where it's short enough that uh, people stay interested. And, and we've interviewed some really, really yeah, interesting people. Absolutely. Yeah. Some people that I've been very impressed um, that we've been able to get on the show, especially only having this for a year. Um, we're, you know, we're really pleased. Um, I mean, Dr. Natalie Emmons was huge. She was fantastic. Um, just such a good guest. Um, we actually, we haven't released this episode yet. By the time you watch this episode, it will be released. <laughs> but um, our last episode, 16, um, where we had attorney Greg Goldenfarb on the show, which was really cool. Greg was great. It's probably one of my favorite. Uh, uh, the, the doctor was actually probably one of my favorites too, but Craig's was probably my favorite. Um I feel like people could watch the Craig Golden Farb episode and it might actually save some lives because he really, we talked about the, those defibrillators, you know, those machines where you see on TV where you 
put them on the, the chest and the body jumps. It doesn't actually work like that. None of that's true. That's all for TV. But how they should be in everybody's office and they should be on every sports field. And Craig has a charity that he does that provides those machines and training for youth sports. And uh, it's if, if one more company, one more um, uh, youth sports team has that and saves a life mm -hmm. because of that broadcast, I'll be very happy yeah. about that yeah. because it's something that we all should have. It's not that costly. We talk about it on that podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it looks like we have some company. Let's go ahead and bring, bring in the cake yeah, over. Yeah, we've got some cake. Yeah. We're going to have a little party here. The yeah. advice for your advocates one year celebration. So we'll show you the cake and then uh, we'll gather around here. So we're a little scared that it's going to fall if over. You're going <laughs> yeah. to be able to see the cake. We actually have an image of yeah, Bob showing the cake to the camera now. I'm waving. And we're going to have the fun. Like, over, guys. Trying to cram <laughs> too many people in an elevator. It's going to be fun to bring everyone to the studio. Everybody, come on. Let's filter it. We've got some cake here. Yeah. <laughs> know, let's do that. Congratulations on one year for the podcast. <laughs> Come on in, everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I think this is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so we see the whole crew, that, or most of the crew that yeah. makes things happen here. So I uh, appreciate everybody here because we got one room for one more. <laughs> uh, the, the team that makes the magic happen here. So. Uh, we, uh, thanks for uh, joining us for our one year anniversary of advice from your advocates and don't forget to subscribe. Everybody say podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go ahead and cut it and then we'll cut this stuff out later in editing or maybe we won't listeners. <laughs> <laughs> it was a shame to cut it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank